My name is Jenny Fowler. I'm the Acting Chief of Interpretation for the Southern Campaign of the American Revolution's Park Group, which includes Calpins National Battlefield, Kings Mountain National Military Park, the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail, and 96 National Historic Site. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the Battle of Calpins. As the American Revolution enters its seventh year, the Southern Continental Army is in shambles, rebuilding itself after a series of crushing defeats and hoping to encourage the local patriots to continue their support. With this mission in mind, General Daniel Morgan is sent into the western South Carolina with a small force of elite Continentals from Maryland and Delaware, supported by Continental Cavalry and Militia. Morgan was already a living legend to many patriots for his role in the Northern Campaign, and he uses that to further attract the local support. The British response to Daniel Morgan's movement is swift and hard. British Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton begins pursuing Morgan, considered a butcher by some patriot militia and a terrifying boogeyman by others. The young Charlton rides through the cold, rain-soaked winter forest of South Carolina at the head of a force that one British officer describes as the flower of Cornwallis' army. Veteran British regulars, Royal Artillery, and Charlton's feared cavalry, infamous among the Patriots for their aggression and skill with the saber. Daniel Morgan retreats to a well-known pasturing area utilizing the surrounding woods and streams to, to control where the coming fight will happen, crafting a battle plan that uses the various strengths of his troops to cover the different weaknesses. On January 17, 1781, Charlton catches up with Morgan. Through successful use of the terrain and unconventional tactics, Morgan draws the British Army into a trap known as a double envelopment. In 30 minutes, the Laurel British soldiers are fleeing the field. Charlton tries to, to halt their retreat, but is forced to withdraw, leaving roughly 85% of his army as, ca ex as casualties at Calpians. This Patriot victory sends ripples throughout the backcountry as local Patriots find a new source of encouragement, shining example of what can happen if they continue to stand with the Continental Army. Lord Cornwallis greatly feels the loss of these elite British soldiers and fast-moving cavalry and in desperate desperation decides to pursue Daniel Morgan and the Continental Army himself into North Carolina. <laughs>